I was in Nepal. There was a church of a few believers. They were holding a prayer meeting. And the village leader and the village people didn't like the fact, so they went and they were beating on the door trying to break in. And guess who appeared? Jesus. And he wasn't small. He was big. They saw him on a hill. He didn't say a word, but they knew it was him. So they quit beating on the door and they knocked and said, let us in because we want to know who this Jesus is. I was in Nepal. A lot of Muslims in the area, and you want to know what hate looks like. Have a Muslim be upset at you and stare at you. We were in this church, and they were going to hold a baptismal service. There was about 30 people who came from a village somewhere out in the middle of Indonesia who said Christ appeared to them and preached to them, and, to, and they accepted him, and he told him to come to this church and be baptized, and I watched the baptismal service. Now, you can deny that kind of stuff. You can deny that I rose from the dead, but you can't deny what people experience. So I'm telling you that does that. Secondly, how many of you, when you received the word this morning, do you felt encouraged? Amen. How many of you felt strengthened? Yeah. How many of you felt built up? Amen. That's the whole purpose of... New Covenant Prophecy. If anybody ever says to you, you're a bad person, rebuke them in the name of Jesus because they are a false prophet. All prophecy in the New Testament is to strengthen, edify, and build up. Now, this is December. It's the month that I begin to focus on the year to come because I want a word from the Lord for 2024. And in that focus, this message came about. And it has to do with Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower. And it begins with behold. Now you wonder what my sack is up here. I thought I'd put this little guy out. I like twat knots. I'm old people. Young people don't like twat knots. But this reminds me of, a, everything I have reminds me of a scripture. So behold means fix your attention. Get rid of all your distractions. Put your phone away. Take your mind out of what you're going to eat afterwards or where you're going to go shopping at or whatever you're going to, whatever football game you're going to watch. Doesn't make any difference. Your team's going to win or your team's going to lose. Doesn't make any difference, right? <laughs> so get that out of your head and fix your attention on what the Word of God is for you today. The Word is the sower who is Jesus went out to sow. That is a concept that God gave me. And the purpose of sowing is to reap. Isaiah sowed and received a hundredfold blessing because the Lord targeted him for blessing. This is going... Remember the word of 2023? I said on January 1, 2023... Deuteronomy 28, 12, the Lord is going to open the heaven and pour out his rain upon your land and everything your hands touch will be blessed. My 2023 has been a blessed year. If yours hasn't, you still got 21 days left in this year to let that word be fulfilled. But I have seen God do a number of things. Even though I had open heart surgery, doesn't make difference. My rent went up. $400 a month and everything else doesn't, you know, the cost of food went up from like that movie, uh, Home Alone. He pays $19.80 for groceries. If you buy those same groceries today, it's over $70. Okay, it doesn't make any difference. God supplies. So I cannot speak for you, but I speak for me. And when I speak for me for 2023, I mean myself and my wife, Margot. 2023 for us has been a year of steady rain being poured out upon us day after day after day. And 2024 is almost here. And the word, the sower went out the sow, ties in with 2023 word about the rain. Because I would say in the prophetic, the rain is done its job. Now it's time 
for the sower to sow in the soil, and you are the soil. I can see it right now in my eyes open. I can see the sower, Jesus, sowing in your life. I spoke to a couple people this morning. I went around, whispered in their ear a word from the Lord. They would receive what they would receive. That's how I do it. I just sneak around when everybody else is doing everything else. <laughs> okay. I can see it with my spiritual eyes. The sower it wants to sow seeds into your soil. You are that soil. Okay? To illustrate the fact, I have a gift I want to give every one of you. Third sermon in a row. I'm getting that good. <laughs> if I only preach every, once, every couple of months, I can do that. Anyway, the ushers, the two guys, they're going to put a soil in your hand. So reach out your hand. We're going to put soil in your hand. Okay? That's soil. Right? Oh, you brought the Lego with you. Oh, okay. They're going to put soil in your hand. This is the Holy Spirit. This is your foundation, and this is you. Okay? That's, that's you. That's soil. You didn't know they made soil like that, did you? Okay, Amazon is wonderful. I just go online and type on, <laughs> type in, I want to buy some soil. And I had all these things popped up. There's tubes and there's boxes and there's these little tiny things. So I thought that's great. Okay, that's soil. The sower went out to sow. In 2024, Jesus has a seed or seeds that he wants to put in you. And he illustrated this morning, for everybody stood up and got a word, Jesus planted a seed in you. Where's your husband? Is your husband sick? He's not here? How you doing? She was in the hospital. The Lord touched her, healed her. How you feeling now? Be blessed in the name of Jesus. God's got a fantastic year in store for you. Amen. God wants to plant a seed or seeds in every single one of us, and that is what he's doing. And we need to be a church that is going to be a church for Jesus Christ, regardless of what everybody else does, regardless of what everybody else say. We are going to not call ourselves a supernatural church. We're just going to be a supernatural church. There is a difference. We're not going to go around bragging about we're a supernatural church. We're not going to broadcast it. <coughs> we're going to let the Holy Spirit do that. Amen. It's Jesus that builds the church daily. It wasn't the people that did it. Let's just <coughs> live the way. Oh, shouldn't drink this. That's the Holy Spirit. So. <laughs> Give me a second here. <coughs> he, the sore... Scatters seed. He doesn't plant it. He scatters it. Okay? And there are seeds on the ground. In the parable, <coughs> a lot of people say there's four types of soil. That's not true. There's only one. <coughs> and the sower sows. He sows the seed, scatters them about so that they can go into the soil, and germinate. <coughs> the seed Jesus wants to sow, nobody's got me any water. I guess I'm going to have to drink this. <laughs> Somebody grab me a water? <coughs> I could drink this. <coughs> Thank you. Lord bless you. I'll take it. <laughs> They both want to receive a... Who said that? They both want to receive a blessing. Now I've got three waters. Well, this one didn't have a label on, so I know. I'm kind of crowded up here. The, G, the seed that Jesus wants to sow in you is your seed. It cannot be sowed in somebody else. 
and you cannot desire what is sowed in somebody else's life. You have to focus on the seed <coughs> that God chooses to sow in you. If you plant, you drop a seed corn in a garden, you don't get over there and get upset and say, well, where's all these peas that I planted? No. God has a seed that he wants to put in your soil, and this represents you, that is yours for 2024, and it's nobody else's. Every one of us will get at least one seed that God is going to plant in you. Some of us are going to get more, but it's God's decision to do that. And this is where you come in. This is where I take us a little bit off. You know, most of the commentaries say about this. They focus on the sower. They focus on the seed. I'm going to focus on the soil. You are the soil. The God is ready to sow into you for 2024. But there's three dangers that will stop the seed that God wants to sow from going into your soil and germinating, okay? Now, why does God want to sow seed in us? Because you have a destiny. Because he loves you. Because he cares about you. He wants you to feel his love more. He wants to transform your life. He wants to give you more hope. He wants to give you more peace that passes all understanding. He wants to prosper you in ways that you've never been prospered before. He only, he's a good God. A good God does not do bad things. Anybody that says that God caused this or God caused that or God wants you to suffer or whatever like that, if, if, my, if I went to Christopher and said, you know, Christopher, God really wants you to suffer and in the next week you're going to have some major problems. You're going to be sick. You're going to have all these trials. You're going to have all these difficulties. What do you think he's going to tell me? Okay? You're not being very good to me, are you? God is only good. All good things come from God. Don't ever accept the fact that God is withholding anything from you. Take responsibility for yourself. The first danger of you as soil is you're liable to be hard. And some of you this morning may be hard. You've been walked on. You've been abused. You've been ridiculed. You've been rejected. You've been told you're no good. You're, you've made your top of your soil hard in order to protect yourself. But no matter, it doesn't make a difference. You are responsible to seek to understand God's word. It's a job of a preacher or a teacher to help you understand the word, it's not to reveal what the word says to you. Hard, a hard ground believer, if that's you, the Bible gives you the formula of breaking up the hard ground. Proverbs 2, turn your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out to God for insight and ask him for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. Got that? The Lord grants wisdom. When I went to uh, Bible school back in 1968, I, uh, I've said this before when I teach in Bible class, I... Didn't care what kind of grade I got in high school as long as I passed. I hated science, but I ended up passing because I got a D minus. But I still didn't have to take it over. I took algebra, and after about two weeks, I got transferred to general math. <laughs> okay? You asked me to diagram a sentence, I would say, What's that? What's a verb? I don't know, frog. What's a noun? Jump. I don't know. What, what's the difference? And forget about pronouns and adjectives and all that kind of stuff. I did learn adjectives. Color, a color is an adjective. I did learn that. 
So I got accepted for Bible school. But I got accepted on probation because you want to be in the ministry, we'll take you, but if you don't make it the grade in the first six months, you're out. So I went to the Bible. I claimed the verse in James, says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, and he will not show partiality. And I said, God, I'm going because you want me to go. And I claimed this verse, ended up my fourth year of Bible college on the dean's list. This is what happened. Okay. So if you lack wisdom of understanding what God's word said because your ground is hard, claim that scripture and let God grant wisdom to you. Let him grant knowledge and understanding to you. Let him grant common sense to you. Come on. For wisdom will enter your heart. That's the promise. Wisdom will enter your heart. Knowledge will fill you with joy. You will make wise choices understand what you need to keep safe. So just by asking wisdom. So if your ground is hard, that's what you need to do. Second danger, rocky soil. Now, a lot of people say the rocky soil is like soil filled with rocks. That's not the case. Soil, not dirt. By the way, soil is not dirt. You know that? You know soil is not dirt? Nothing will live in dirt. Anything you plant in dirt will die. If you look at your life as dirt, especially if people have been walking all over you, nothing that God puts in your life will live. Every promise God gives you will die. Everything you try to do for the Lord will die. Soil is not dirt. Soil has dirt in it. And you, the Bible says in Genesis that you, from dust you were made, to dust you shall return. Well, it can also be said soil. From soil you came and soil you shall return. And 59 elements in this little soil right here is in you. You know that? You are made from 59 elements that, that's in this soil. So that's what you're made from, okay? So don't ever let anybody project on you that you are dirt. Don't ever say that to yourself. If you feel that way, reject it and say, I'm soil, and I'm good soil, and God's going to plant within me. But rocky soil, soil will go around rocks. You know, you plant a seed in the soil with rocks, rocks the seed will just go and hit the rock and just grow around it. But you have what they call limestone. I grew up in Indiana. There's a lot of limestone. So you, you see, you can, you got this dirt. But maybe uh, three inches down, there's this big, huge limestone slab. And seed cannot penetrate through the limestone. So basically, it's having a rock under your life that is keeping the word of God from going deep within you. It can only go so far but because you let that rock be in your life, the, the seed can only grow so far. And it says it can't go down. It starts growing up. Sun comes out, which is trials and difficulties, and it kills it. Okay? So it's still good soil. It just can't go anywhere. That just, seed just can't go anywhere because it's not very deep. Okay? So, James 1, 2 to 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren... When you encounter various trials, which is a rock, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete and be able to break through the rock that's keeping you seed from going deep. Also, you can take the promise of Psalms 34, 19. As a righteous person, you will face many troubles, but the Lord comes to your rescue every single time. Amen. Third danger is thorny soil. Are you a thorny soil Christian? Huh? You know, Matthew says thor thorny ground is cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches. Mark adds those two, plus he adds the lust of other things. 
And Luke goes on to add the pleasures of this life. So a thorny ground believer is best described as a worry wart or a nervous Nelly. Okay? Someone who's so anxious or exceedingly concerned about minor things that they literally, if you're the expression in the Midwest, they make a mountain out of a molehill. Yep. Okay? It's a, it, it's a, I, t I taught one time on essentials and non-essentials. Don't ever take a stand against somebody over a non-essential. Take a stand on essentials. You can't compromise the essentials that Christ died for you, Christ rose from the dead, Christ was born of a virgin, Christ is going to come back. You cannot compromise on those, but you, you don't want to get in a situation with somebody over something that's not important. Well, it's one who allows things to compete with the promise that God has given them. They know the command of Philippians 4, 6, and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all comprehension, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. They know the verse, but they're so worried, so frustrated, that they just don't, it's a command, by the way, they just don't obey it. In conversation, you might hear them say, there's always so much to worry about. What's happening in the world? What's happening to the economy? What's happening to jobs? As for the economy, I think that businesses doubled everything, doubled all the prices for the holidays. I'm very conscious how much things cost, okay? I don't go shopping, I go hunting. Okay, for bargains. I don't walk into one store and buy a bunch of stuff. I'll end up going to three or four stores if I have to, because they're all close together anyway. And I've been noticing that there are things that a month ago I paid three or four dollars for. Now they want seven dollars for them. I couldn't believe it. We buy this bread, it's under three dollars. I went and bought one. Last night, when I'm paying any attention, it was $3.98. It dropped over a dollar from the last time I bought a loaf of bread. And I buy the same type of bread. Okay? But I pay it because the Lord supplies all your needs. But there are a person who sits around and talks about how bad things are. As for money, <coughs> money talks. Money tries to deceive you by saying, I can offer you what God offers you. You know that? Money says God offers you security. I can offer you security. Money says God offers you freedom. I can offer you freedom. Money says God says nothing's impossible. Well, if you've got enough of me, there's nothing impossible. But money's lying to you. It can turn its back on you in a second. I don't know about you, but I, I actually knew a guy that um, lost... $35,000 in one day in the stock market. I thought, whoa, I know a guy who used to be a millionaire that now struggles to even make ends meet. Okay? Money is fleeing. You can't trust it, don't believe it. Other things, pleasures, we all know what that is. But there's one more soil. It's called the good soil. So how do you get rid of the hardness if you're hard soil? How do you get rid of the rock that's under you if you're rocky soil. How do you get rid of thorns and become good soil? Matthew 13, 23. The good soil comes by hearing, not just listening. There's a difference between listening and hearing. Are you listening to me this morning or are you hearing me this morning? There is a difference. Okay. The good soil comes by hearing and by the Holy Spirit giving you understanding of what you hear. We determine our heart's receptivity. If we want to be good soil, we can be. I don't care what you are, hard, rocky, thorny. You can be good soil. It's our will to seek after God's truth. We will find it. If God is blessing it, us with under, he will bless us with understanding of what we read. You want to get closer to God? You want God to get closer to you? Principle is you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. 
which means he's eager to do so. But you're stopping him. It's not he was, he's not stopping him. So this morning, God wants to break up hard ground, crack open rocky ground, <coughs> and remove the thorns because in 2024, he wants to plant a seed in you, but you have to get your soul ready. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Too bad I can't put this on the big screen behind me. Watch and learn. This is the Holy Spirit. This is you. You want to be good soil. What you got to do is soak in the Holy Spirit. Watch. You see it? It's soaking in all the water I poured on it. And see it's growing? See that? All that water is gone. So I put some more, okay? Spreads out. Okay? And then the Holy Spirit wants to do this. I need to put some more water on him. The Holy Spirit wants to do this. He wants to get you all prepared so he can put a seed in you. So what I, what I want you to do is take your soil home, find you a little pot, put, it, put this in the pot, pour the water on it as the Holy Spirit, and as it all crumbles apart, it's very good soil, and I'm not going to throw this away, by the way, I'm going to take it and put it on my plant. But find you some seed that will fit in the pot, I mean, you can't put corn in there because it'll get fall over. <laughs> Find you a seed, put it in the pot, Amen. and watch the seed grow in 2024 as an illustration and reminder to you that the seed God is going to plant in you for the coming year, if you make your soil good, it's going to grow and it's going to produce the fruit that God wants it to produce. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you want to sow in us. Father, it has rained upon us, the blessings down upon us. I think of the word I got two years ago about a river flowing down the river of blessing. I still see that. I still experience that. As I flow, the rain of the last year has been poured down. But now you're saying, pull up to the side of the shore. Find the soil that you examine yourself. Find the soil that you make your soil good. Allow, the Lord says, allow me to pour my spirit upon your soil. Allow me to put the seed in you that I want to put. And it will grow and accomplish what I send it to do to strengthen, encourage, or build you up. And declare that in the name of Jesus, amen.